first question I will ask about Latvia's plans to join the uh, Euro by 2014. Do you support them? I think every country in the European Union which uh, fulfills the criteria uh, should become one day a member of the Eurozone. And I think uh, Latvia was uh, very successful, especially after the crisis of 2008. And I welcome the work for structural reforms and I welcome the commitment of the people of Latvia uh, to overcome this crisis with structural reforms and hard work. Uh, can you mention how can Latvia benefit by joining the Eurozone now? Because it's a pretty a lot of turbulence there and uh, there are a lot of skeptics uh, about telling that this is not the right time to do that. It is a decision which uh, uh, can only be decided in Latvia, of course. We think that the euro is a very stable currency. If you compare this to other currencies worldwide, and I think uh, the euro is a success story. It is um, promoting our uh, export. It makes the economy in our national countries stronger especially if you combine it with other structural reforms. And um, what we have in, in Europe and the Eurozone is not a crisis of the Euro. What we are facing is a debt crisis. And a debt crisis uh, you cannot answer by making it easier to take up new debts. So fiscal discipline, solidarity and growth are the three answers to this debt crisis in the Eurozone. Yes, you, you were talking a lot uh, about this triangle of measures, which is, as you mentioned, the discipline, uh, growth and solidarity. But how can you achieve the growth by implementing a strict austerity measures? How could it be done? From my point of view, it's an illusion to think that you can stimulate growth in a sustainable way by, make, by taking up debts. You cannot buy growth with debts. You only get growth with competitiveness. So competitiveness is the key question. How do we get competitiveness? We get competitiveness if we, for example, fulfill the single market, uh, also in the area of uh, energy or the digital area. Then second, I think it is urgent that we work on a concept which I call better spending in the European Union. It's not more spending, it's better spending. So the money what we have, and it's enormous what we spend in the next years as European Union, we should invest more into areas of education, science, research, infrastructure. Because this is the natural resources of the European people. We do not have too much raw materials, we do not have too much natural resources in the European Union, with a few exceptions, but what we have is one uh, raw material. This is knowledge, creativity, uh, this is our advantage to the rest of the world. Uh, you are talking now uh, about competitiveness, but in the theory of economy, I, I know that two ways of, of increasing the competitiveness. One is by uh, big investment uh, in the production, in the productivity, uh, in the new technology and so on. And the other one is like monetary policy. You can develop your uh, currency and, and then uh, be more competitive on the world stage. But for the southern countries like Greece and Spain, none of these instruments are available at the moment. They have a, a huge problem. Where will they take money to increase their competitiveness? I, I do not agree to your analysis because um, I think that especially uh, Greece has a lot of uh, chances and opportunities. Um, just think about the field of uh, or the area of renewable energies. Solartech, for example, could be an excellent um, uh, investment in Greece if uh, we have their circumstances and the framework which works. So, for the investments. 
or the engagement of uh, Prime Minister Samaras for privatization is very important. We all know if um, the government is responsible for every company, uh, they are not competitive enough. So uh, private uh, competition between companies stimulates also the products and uh, brings better results. And then, of course, we all know that uh, in Greece, and this is what the Greece government said by itself, um, it is necessary that, uh, of course, the governance in Greece um, will develop in a better way, which means they have taxes, but who's collecting the taxes? Uh, is there a system with, that you really get the taxes and the tax rates into the public budgets? So it is, um, it is not only the question of reforms, it's also the question of the implementation of the reforms, and I welcome and appreciate the efforts of the Greece government. You are now talking about the long-term investment and so on, but how do you imagine, how can those southern countries like Spain uh, deal with, the, for example, 24% unemployment now? It looks like a big depression in the United States during the 30s. Uh, we shouldn't compare this, because the situation today is totally different. But um, I do not agree once again because um, it is not true that this is only a long-term policy, what we are uh, proposing. If you look, for example, to Ireland or to Portugal, they started with reforms. They worked very hard on budget discipline and on grows via competitiveness and I mean the positive results are obvious. So I think it is wrong just to put fresh money on the table and this would decrease the pressure for highly needed political reforms. And what we need is we should use the chance of the crisis, which means we have to deepen our European Union, we have to work on a political European Union, we have to work closer together as an answer to this crisis or to the next crisis. Are you talking about the federal Europe now? I'm, I'm talking about a better cooperation and uh, the deepening of the European Union. And this means for us that, for example, um, we should have a commission with uh, really uh, executive uh, possibilities. And um, we should have a parliament, a real parliament. And then we should have a second chamber, which is now the council. Uh, from my point of view, uh, it would be better if the president of the commission would be elected uh, directly by the people in the European Union. Uh, so that uh, the candidates have to convince the people not only in their home countries for their work but also in the European uh, Union. And I think we should work on a real European constitution um, with democracy, transparency, responsibility, rule of law and many other things. And then I would suggest that we have a referendum about this constitution in the European Union, that we ask the people uh, so that they decide this would um, better the identification of the people with the European idea. We should never forget that uh, the European Union is much more than the answer to the darkest chapter of our history. It is also our life insurance in times of globalization. I mean, you are a young man uh, and you know exactly that in the world of tomorrow you will not survive as a single isolated country in the world. We have new centers of power like China, like Brazil, like India, many others. The next 11 are standing and waiting for the, for the opportunities. 
And um, even Germany, which is relatively big in the European Union, is too small to succeed in global. In global. So we have to combine our power. And we have to work together. And then we are uh, a community of values with a European way of life, with a European model. Um, and then we are able, from my point of view, to be very successful also in times of globalization. And this is nothing which will happen in 20 or 50 years. This is a question of the next decade. It's a question of the next 10 years. In the next 10 years we will see whether Europe is still at the top worldwide or if we will get downgrade uh, in the global context. And uh, I think this is uh, our main goal. And this, is, um, this makes it <clears throat> difficult for us today because we all have to decide this now. It is much more than the management of the crisis. It is the self-commitment of the European people uh, that we show the world uh, Europe is not an old continent. Europe is part of the future of the world. But do you believe we can implement uh, this, what you just said, in the times when uh, <coughs> the Euro skepticism is growing rapidly? Let us stand up together, especially the young generation, against this wind of renationalism. This wind of renationalism is cold and will freeze everything. Um, in times of globalization, renationalization is exactly the wrong answer. International network. Uh, to combine the power of the European countries, this is the answer in our time.